Bibles to the book of Jeremiah. And while you're turning to Jeremiah chapter number 4, there is a momentous event happened today. Clarence and Gilda's anniversary is today. <laughs> Happy anniversary to y'all. <laughs> wow. September 20th. All right, we're going to look at uh, Nebuchadnezzar and his march towards Jerusalem found there as we look at it. I, I've got something here that uh, it shock you. Do you know the Girl Scouts now have a, a way that you can earn the LGBTQ plus pride patch? Yeah. Yeah, it says uh, uh, they've got uh, to earn the patch. You have to sketch a portrait of a member of the LGBT community you admire, make an LGBT whatever, uh, music playlist, create art that celebrates how families come and all kinds, participate in No Name Calling Week, uh, which is sponsored by the uh, Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network. And uh, so this is going on. That's how, and you get a patch for that. Of course, of course I need to add to this that uh, the, um, the, they've lost hundreds of thousands. I mean, it's, it, it's amazing. They've, they've had a, um, at the big jamboree this year, um, they had 15,000 show up at the Jamboree. Now that's not, uh, normally they run 40,000 at the Jamboree. So they've had all of that. Um, they've had 80,000 claims against them for sexual abuse. Uh, cost them $2.46 billion. Um, so things are not going so well. But do you think that, see, the, the agenda is stronger in the agenda's mind than the organization. And if it shuts the organization down, they don't care about the kids anyway. They just care about getting their agenda across. It's amazing how, how they will destroy whatever it takes to get you to verbalize that their lifestyle is good and okay. And there's no thing that will stop them. Uh, we know that from the biblical uh, revelation there in Genesis 19 where blindness didn't even stop. Them. They were struck with blindness. You'd think, oh, they'd be worried. No, nah, they didn't care. You know? So as we get to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, now we've gone, and I know these are slow chapters. They will speed up. Uh, but right now they basically give us insight into Jeremiah and how he was dealing with the message that he was going to be giving and was giving uh, the people in Judah and Jerusalem and he had been telling them for years that their doom was soon to come and now it's right on the horizon in fact as he as this chapter unfolds chapter 4 you actually see him prophetically declaring details about what was about to happen up to this point it had not happened. Now, there had been things going on. Since the days of Josiah, you had uh, Jehoiakim and Jehoiakim and Zedekiah was happening. Uh, and so there were, there were uh, great uh, opposition to the Jews and to Jerusalem from these foreign powers. That had already begun, but the, the great catastrophe of judgment had not yet fallen on them, although they had seen evidences of things going south pretty quick. But the people ignored the warning signs. And that's why in this chapter, Jeremiah is saying, you know, the Lord speaking through Jeremiah said, if you just, even now, while you're on the brink of destruction, if you would just get right, I'll turn back the one I'm going to use to destroy you. But they continued doing what they normally do, and they looked at the messenger as being no more than a troublemaker. Now, 
This is not unprecedented. I've mentioned this before, but I do, uh, as I was reading through this, this series on, uh, on church history, uh, that is what happened in the early days of Christianity, the very early 100, 150 years after uh, the Lord Jesus ascended back to heaven. Uh, the Christians were persecuted uh, not because they were going around necessarily in preaching Jesus is the Messiah, although that was not that was not received by the rank and file person in that world at that time. But what really bothered the heathen was the unwillingness for Christians to endorse false teaching, heretical ways, immoral practices that the culture wanted. Uh, so. So they got mad at these Christians, and so they used that anger uh, to turn the masses against them. In fact, anytime something happened, if a fire broke out, if there was a flood, they blamed it on the Christians for making their false gods mad. And so you could see that the Christians were in trouble. Uh, and uh, uh, they were asked, in fact, some of these... Uh, emperors, they would hear about these Christian communities where people were getting saved and living for God and refusing to follow the, uh, the immoral mores of the, the world at that time and saying no to this and no to that. And no, we won't participate in that. And no, we won't, won't act like that. No, we won't be at your festivals. No, we won't live like in debauchery at your feasts. And, and so what an emperor would do when he heard about a group of people that did this way, he, in some cases he wasn't himself uh, convinced that these people were a threat to society. And if he was like that, a couple of them actually employed this method of action against them. He would call them in and he'd say, look, you can believe anything you want to believe. You want to believe in your Jesus? Believe in your Jesus. But you must also give sacrifice and obeyance to our gods. We're not asking you to deny your God, but you have to show sacrifice and say and, and announce allegiance to these, and they had a variety of gods. Well, the Bible Christian wouldn't do it, and that's what that was a sentence to death. Now, there were some that went in there and, oh, well, okay, I'll do that, you know. And, of course, uh, uh, they, uh, they had absolutely no influence whatsoever. They, they lost both ways. But, uh, but this is kind of what was happening to Jeremiah. These people in Judah, they didn't like what he said. He was one of, at that time, the only one that he knew of. He say, your practice of going up into the hills and being part of their religious services to honor deities and there were so many there were so many uh, they uh, they were uh, doing a archaeological marine archaeological survey off the coast of Egypt of course Egypt big country but there was off the course of Egypt uh, and a couple days ago they they went in and and something like 12 miles offshore where the where the uh, ocean used not to be but there was a a temple built to Aphrodite. And they, these archaeological uh, surveyors underwater have now found this temple. Of course, it's caved in and earthquake shook it down and the sea, they had a tsunami that apparently uh, buried it. And uh, so here we are uh, 2,500 years later. Uh, they find the rubble and in, in there there was a a statue which they believed it was the, a temple of Aphrodite, which they borrowed from the Greeks. The Greeks were using Egyptian uh, civilization and the Egyptians were using the Greeks. This is about the time of Alexander the Great, 330, 335 B.C. So God, uh, through his natural way, covered them up, shook them down, covered them up and buried them for 2,500 years. <laughs> so... Good luck on that, you know. So Jeremiah's trying to keep his people from falling into this. And so it says in verse number 19, he says, 
my bowels, my bowels. Now this is Jeremiah preaching. Uh, verse 18 is Jerusalem being, uh, uh, you know, kind of per personified. Uh, you, got, you got three parts here. Now, and the reason I say this, Jeremiah was written somewhat as a poem. There, those who have broke it down, it, it does have prose in it and it has stanzas, but, uh, but it, it, it's, it's not for us. To, it's what, the way we got it is the way it is. Uh, but if you want to get into that, you could find the, the verses and the stanzas and all of that. Well, uh, he's crying out in, in this way. And in verse number 18, he says, Thy ways and thy doings have procured these things unto thee. This is thy wickedness because it is bitter, because it reaches into thy heart. That's Jeremiah condemning, through the mouth of Jeremiah, the Lord condemning Jerusalem for their wicked ways. And then Jeremiah pops in and gives himself and his view. Verse 19, my bowels, my bowels. Now, uh, of course, the word bowels here is the, the inner sanction of the body. Uh, what do we get? What word do we get out of bowels? Bowl. <laughs> I mean, look at the. It's what is a bowl? It's an empty space. It's it contains an empty space. And so when he talked about my bowels, my bowels, he wasn't talking about his intestines, his intestines. He was talking about that inner being, the inside of me. We call it a lot of times our heart hurts. And we're not talking about our heart heart. We're talking about our inner feeling. So he, he lays out that. He says, uh, my bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me because thou hast, I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Jeremiah says, I already know what's coming. I believe God and what he's told me. And the sound of war is coming from Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians as they make their march down towards Jerusalem. And he says the, the sound of the trumpet is that like a cavalry charging, blowing that trumpet. And he says, I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. He said, my heart's broken. I see it coming. Now, while he's telling the people this, they didn't go, oh, we better watch out. <laughs> they didn't care. They didn't believe it. And uh, I look around tonight in the U.S. of A. Uh, they don't believe that God would judge this nation. They don't. They don't. For the. They don't believe at in one moment that this thing could collapse because of the judgment of God. Uh, it's the farthest thing from their mind. They still get up, and I always shudder when I have. We're the strongest nation in the world. Well, only if God makes us that. Hey. I, I, I thought about that F-35. It's supposed to be the most highly technical aircraft in the world. It got away from one of them up there in South Carolina the other day, and they don't know what happened. But the thing not only got away from the pilot ejected, and the plane went where it wanted to go. It was going down when he ejected, and then all of a sudden after he ejected, the nose turned up. Who knows who was driving that thing? So this idea that somehow because of our virtue or our strength that we're the, in, you know, we're the strongest thing. Look, uh, anytime the Lord wants to turn it off, I mean, I have no doubt he blessed us and built us and what got us through traumatic, difficult times and, and, and got through major situations. And, and, but that doesn't mean that he's going to put up with our paganism especially when we should have known better and so he, he, he goes on to say destruction upon destruction is cried that's double destruction uh, uh, whammy on top of whammy that's the way we'd say it uh, for the whole land is spoiled and this is Jerusalem speaking now you had Jeremiah you had uh, the Lord you had Jerusalem now and it's speaking in a personified way it's going. Suddenly my, are my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment. Now, generally speaking, 
much of the population lived in tents outside the city. And uh, so when somebody came into town, they had to pass through communities of tents. Not unusual in the Middle East. And so what, what's being said already, the suburbs are being destroyed already. The city's next. Uh, but, uh, you know, Long Island's being destroyed and Chappaquiddick's being destroyed and, you know, uh, Saratoga's being destroyed, West Point's being destroyed, but New York City's coming. D the people didn't care. They were so into their lifestyle and their pleasure-seeking and their wanting to live in rebellion and continuing in all their pagan worship of false deities. He said in verse number 21, now Jeremiah speaks again, how long shall I see the standard? That's, hey, that's the flag bearer of another country, a standard. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? So Jeremiah is seeing it prophetically. Um, you know, in days gone by when they had war, you had the flagman, you know, he was always out front. You remember the drummer boy, <laughs> the flag carrying? And, and, uh, and if somebody got shot that carried the flag, the next man up. And so Jeremiah is saying, I already see it. I can visualize what's happening. And it says in verse 22, the Lord now speaks in this way of, po of poet, uh, poetry. The Lord says, for my people is, is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children. You know what that means? The old English sottish means drunken. These people are drugged and drunk. That's all they do. They are sottish children. And they have none understanding. They're fools, blinded, and ignorant. Notice this phrase right here. It appears a couple of different times in the Bible. Uh, it says, they are wise to do evil. They know how to sin. But to do good, they have no knowledge. I mean, tonight in America, we have, they've come up with every kind of contraption and entertainment and lifestyle that you could ever imagine to sin. They know, hey, think of all the things that in the last 50 years been created to live a sinful life. And they, come, they keep coming up with, and, and just think of the, the entertainment world. I mean, your, your, uh, your MTVs, your rock and roll videos, all the, all the debauchery that is passed around in these videos. The complete rebellion and rejection of God. They came up with that in the last 50 years. Um, and then the fentanyl, the cocaine, the heroin. I mean, 50 years ago, uh, it was marijuana, and, and some of that stuff was just beginning. But it was a taboo amongst most, most of the society. You know, it's just... A handful of folks would be involved in that while everybody else goes, ooh, bad, bad. <laughs> now the government's involved in it. The senators are involved in it. The leadership's in it. The military's in it. Everybody's in it. And they've, they've kind of invented a new lifestyle uh, to sin. And you could go right down the list. I know this drag queen business, oh, that's a new invention. I mean, I know they've been around, but in America, that's a new way to sin. They come up with that. Uh, uh, I don't know why there weren't, but just when I, hey, 50 years ago, there were very few practicing homosexuals. Very few. Now, you wonder, you're, every time you meet somebody who's not, you're glad to see them. Everybody's suspect. I never saw these uh, transvestites running around. 
I go to the, I go to the uh, pharmacy, there's one there working behind the counter. I go to the breakfast place, there's one out there. <laughs> Don't know if it's man or woman. Suspect it's a little of both, huh? But uh, you see them everywhere. Where did this come from? I can't ever recall from the time I was old enough to remember, four or five years old, till the time I was 60 years old, I can't ever remember seeing but maybe one. Now they're, it's, it's a fad. Uh, I saw a couple in uh, Sam's the other day and they had a, and, and they, they, were, they were loud and boisterous and they were hollering at each other. They, and, and look, I'm not blasting everything, but when, when they cover from, from the neck to the feet and tattoos, I'm thinking <laughs> something's wrong there. Why would anybody want to do that to their body? I know people that put ones on here and there, all but this thing of being totally covered, it's like, where'd that come from? That's a new invention. Well, they, there were two of them doing air hollering, screaming, and then they had, they had a, a kid about that tall that they had cut the hair to look halfway between a girl's haircut and a boy's haircut. And then they were, le the, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's a little boy or a little girl. I have no idea. It, it kind of acted like a boy, but it, they were walking around like it was a girl. I'm thinking, who, why are they doing that to their kid? You can blame the parents for that. Uh, all of that saying, this is what God said concerning the children of Israel, the Jews. He said, they are wise to do evil, but to do good, they don't have a clue. Do something good, they don't know how. Why? Because they're so involved in wanting to sin, live like the devil. So you can see how, now, look there if you would. In Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 4, here's the echoing of this same, God said, they're foolish. Why are they foolish? Because they don't know me. That's what God calls foolish, is people who don't know him. Fools. He says in verse 4, therefore I said, surely these are poor, they are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. That's pretty bad when people lose sight of who God is and what his ways are. Verse 5, I will get me unto the great men and will speak unto them, for they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst their bonds. So the ones that used to stay as the leaders and strong and faithful, now they don't want to do it anymore. That's what he said. Look at chapter number 8 of Jeremiah and verse 8 and 9. It's mentioned again. This is repeated over and over. Look at chapter 8 and verse 8. How do ye say we are wise and the Lord, the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he. The pen of the scribes is in vain. They're going, hey, God's with us. They actually attributed their lifestyle to God. Hey, when I hear people say, God made me this way. <laughs> no, he didn't. He created it male or female. He didn't make them any other way. And look at verse, and they, these people were saying the same thing. How? Jeremiah said, how do you say we are wise in the law of the Lord is with us? How, do you, how are you able to stand up and say and act like that? He said, if that's the case, he made it in vain. In fact, the, the scribes who wrote the book, they wasted their time. If you're saying that's God's way. <laughs> well, look at verse 9. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord and what wisdom is in them? They got, hey, let's put it like they do down south. They got no sense. That's, that's all you can see. And, and you look around tonight, you know, 
uh, I saw just a little few clips of the debacle there at the uh, House uh, interview today with the Attorney General, and then somebody else had the military uh, uh, sitting there, and they were asking the military leaders, have you, have you implemented uh, the president's diversity inclusion laws in the military? The military is not about diversity and inclusion. It's about breaking things and killing people. That's what militaries are for. They're not for making everybody feel good. They're certainly not for make sure we got uh, everybody represented. It's, it's about soldiers devoting their life for the cause of the freedom in a country. That's what it's about. And so... Um, they, they, they don't seem to have any sense. And I'm not talking about common sense. I'm talking about sense. It, it's like, what are y'all doing? Do, do they even know what they're doing? Look at chapter number uh, 9, verse number 3. And they bend their tongues like the, their bow for lies. But they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. For they proceed from evil to evil. And the reason why? They know me not, saith the Lord. So when the psalmist said, A fool saith in his heart there is no God. He's right on, isn't he? He's just echoing what God's already said. Foolish. Dumbfounded. Foolish. Back at Jeremiah chapter 4. So now Jeremiah is prophetically declaring not only what's about to happen to, the, to Jerusalem, but also he's given us an insight. Uh, see, Nebuchadnezzar is a type of the Antichrist in the Bible. And uh, he's given us some insight of, uh, about the tribulation. He said, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. One of the judgments in the book of Revelation uh, one of the uh, judgment vials, I believe, uh, was that there would be darkness. That's one of the tri tribulation judgments, darkness. In other words, the star lights of the stars go out, the lights of the moon go out, and the light of the sun goes out. That's part of a tribulational, uh, in the book of Revelation, I think, 16. It tells us that. And, and here he's seeing... Not only what Nebuchadnezzar is about to come, he's going to burn that city down. The smoke of the torment is going to go up in that city. It's going to get so uh, covered in smoke that it's going to shut the night lights down. But prophetically, he's saying, I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled. And all the hills moved lightly. So apparently, in this, this judgment of God upon Jerusalem that Nebuchadnezzar brought, there were earthquakes and uh, sinkholes as part of the judgment of that, of that time. But also, it will be when it's time for the Lord Jesus to set his feet down on the Mount of Olives. You know what it says, it's going to split. So you're seeing him talking in the present and then talking in the future. Uh, Verse 25 says, I beheld and lo, there was no man and all the birds of heaven were fled. Now, that's mentioned several times in the Old Testament that the birds disappear. And when you get a uh, catastrophe, a volcano or an earthquake, it's known that the birds leave. Um, here's what Zephaniah said. The word of the Lord came into Zephaniah during Josiah's time. He said, I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. This is the same prophecy that Jeremiah is prophesying about, going to happen. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling blocks with the wicked, and I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. That's another tribulational prophecy, while at the same time 
applicable to Nebuchadnezzar and the destruction of Judah and Jerusalem. Now, this idea, um, three times this is mentioned uh, in the Bible, this destruction of Jerusalem. Uh, Second Kings mentions it. Second Chronicles mentions it. And Jeremiah mentions it. Three times it, uh, it is destroyed. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar destroys it. Titus came in and destroyed it in A.D. 70. And it's going to be destroyed the third time when the Lord Jesus comes to rule and reign in the, right before the millennium, in the day of the Lord, the judgment of God. So uh, the Bible is such a full book no, nobody will ever master the Bible. There's too much in there. And, there's, and only as we continue to study it does God reveal things. And truth is, uh, there's been nobody got it yet. But it sure is, it's ahead of the news media. The, 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 the Word of God is way past the Drudge Report. CNN, They're, what they are reporting on, God has already told us about 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 years ago. They're just picking up little details that they don't understand and put it, can't even put it in a context. They just come up, you know, all this thing, Ukraine and, and the, the Palestinians. Did you see where they, they declared the UNESCO, United Nations, what a pathetic bunch of people. They, they, they have not stopped any wars. I, I read the other day there was 170 wars happened since they organized the United Nations. They were supposed to stop all the wars. Tonight, you got Ukraine. The, you got the Palestinian-Israeli thing. You got the thing going on down in Haiti. You got North Korea and its... Pro and look, they actually... Uh, when, when you think about it, they've caused more wars than they, <laughs> they were ever supposed to stop. It's crazy. Now, uh, the, they're meeting up in New York right now, and China's prime minister didn't show up, and Russia didn't show up. Well, those two are the Security Council members. So that shows you how, how unimportant they are right now. They've, they've pretty much served their their purpose, but they designated this week Jericho of being a United Nations special place. Everybody says, well, that's wonderful. Well, the problem, it is what it is. It's, it's see, that's on the West Bank, so-called West Bank, that Israel claims because God gave it to them. But they say because of archaeological digs, and historical uh, ramifications, the United Nations is going to be controlling that, which means the Palestinians are going to be controlling it. Yeah. That's all that means because they set all this up. And so now they've just gone in there and declared, no, you're not getting it, Israel. And they did that two days ago. So all of this stuff is going up down. Uh, and you know what the Palestinians had? They, they had the uh, gumption to say that the archaeological evidence proves that the Palestinians date back far beyond the Jews. Now, what they failed to say was God told them when he brought them out of Egypt to go drive them out of the land he was given to them. And they did. You remember Jericho, Joshua. <laughs> and so now, uh, yeah, you're going to find uh, not Palestinian stuff, but Canaanite, uh, which are not the Palestinians. Uh, there wasn't but just a few thousand Palestinians in 1948, maybe I think 3,000. That's all there were. Uh, be, be, so now there's about two, two and a half million. Uh, 
They didn't exist. But now they're the world movement against Israel. And, and it's way all people who hate and want to destroy Israel, that's, that's their uh, tip of the air right there. So now they got Jericho. That's the United Nations, you know. And God's going to take care of the United Nations. There's not going to be much left of them except the judgment that he's going to fall upon them. But all this is coming down. Jeremiah saw it. Zephaniah saw it. Uh, Joel saw it. All the minor prophets saw it. Isaiah saw it. And they prophesied about it. While at the same time they were prophesying about the near future, they were prophetically declaring the end future. In fact, in the passage just a few verses down, God says, I'm going to bring judgment and I'm going to destroy this thing. I'm going to burn it down. I'm going to do away with whatever. But not to the end. Not totally. Going to leave it there. God it's going to look bad, and it did. 586 B.C., when Nebuchadnezzar got out of it, there was nothing. In fact, when Nehemiah got word back for 50 years later, what was Jerusalem like? They said, it's, it's desolate. It's charred. It's burnt. The land's not fit for man nor beast. I don't know what Nebuchadnezzar did, but boy, he did a number, did he not? And so he was an um, uh, incredible warrior and a... Uh, and powerful man. Well, appreciate you coming out tonight, and uh, uh, we look forward to seeing you, Lord willing, on Sunday. Let's bow our heads together. Lord, thank you for our opportunity to meet again in your name, and we pray that you would uh, bless us and protect us as we go forth. In Jesus' name, amen.